Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today we're going to look at uh, uh, the construction of this composite square. And what this is, is this is the big brother to this Herman Schmidt uh, master square. And what these behave as is a perpendicular standard for the, for the shop. Um, you, it's, a, it's a right angle. It's a precision right angle, much like a cylinder square. Um, you would use a, uh, a squareness comparator uh, to zero on your, your standard, and then you can check parts on the surface plate to uh, determine if they're square and how much out of square they are. So it quantifies their uh, uh, lack of perpendicularity or their agreeance with perpendicularity. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at how I put this thing together. Okay. Now, I know you guys aren't going to believe me, but uh, I just kind of eyeballed that thing up there. And this just goes to show you that I'd rather be lucky than good any day of the week. Uh, there's no limit to luck. You can only be so good. <laughs> All right. One thou. You know, a machinist can't leave well enough alone, right? So we got one down there. Let's give, give it a little, little dot there. Let's see. I need to go towards it. Let me tap over here. All right, let's see what we got. All right, you know what? I'm not messing with it anymore. Lock this down. So never be afraid to use your sign bar. I mean, it's such a simple tool and, you know, you can set it up many, many different ways. So it's, it's, it's just a, it's never too precise, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So uh, um, sometimes it's just the easiest thing to use. Uh, they have a nice surface to indicate. I've got it clamped just lightly here so that nothing moves around. And uh, try that with a protractor, you know, it's just not, that easy so okay so we're lined up on the one of the uh, endpoints of the slot here and um, what I've done is I've just fished it and found a good uh, a good spot you know you could clamp something there and indicate it but these are just lightning holes so we're not super worried about them so I got a good lineup here or it feels like a good lineup I should say and we have several cuts that are at the same angle here, okay? And once we zero out on here, this is where, you know, having a good CAD layout and setting your angles accurately makes a difference. Because now I can just cruise over, you know, to a known dimension, okay? And get into my next, uh, my next hole. And I don't remember what the number is, but uh, 948. Something like that, and then, uh, well, anyway, you get the idea. So uh, you can get into your next slot, uh, your next um, starting point, and then a mill over to here. So, and I know the distance since this is a isosceles triangle. The this distance is equal to this distance, so um, it, it happens to be one and five a. So uh, I just have to zero and move over one and five a, and I got it. 
Uh, so we'll get those cut out. We got those uh, angles milled and now we got to swap the setup around and uh, cut out the last bit there. Now this is actually a good juncture to talk about something. This is a classic bozo mistake, right? You're all excited, you want to flip the setup around and get onto your, uh, your next angle. Before you take anything out of the vise or move anything, just take a deep breath and look at your setup and go, oh, hey, think about it. And what else can I do while I got it here or what am I forgetting and that is this whole other side here right now you know it may seem obvious to most people but uh, um, I saw somebody do this once <laughs> or it actually happens more than you uh, than uh, you might think and that, that you just you take the thing out of the vice and you go ah God, I forgot to countersink it or I forgot to, you know, whatever it is, right? So just take a deep breath, think about it for a second, then go, yeah, I'm done. Pull it out of the vise and you're good to go. And because uh, sometimes things are really, really hard to get back in the vise exactly the way you had them before. So, all right, let's get going. I will get this other side and then we'll swap the setup and we'll get it all cut out. Thing. Hmm. Yeah, a couple tents. I'm not too worried about that. This is just to get it close uh, to start with, so I don't have to grind so much of the case hardening off when uh, when it comes back from heat treat.
at the uh, kind of the weld assembly here, how we're going to put this together. I got some spacers underneath here to centralize the uh, the tube in this. That's kind of how it's going to go together there. Um, let's see, in there. Flush those up. Just kind of flush with that end. And then, you know, I kind of want the tube in the center of this, uh, this plate here, so I played around with the height of those uh, spacers under there to get it in the middle. And this should get the ends nice and uh, evened up. Okay, and we clamp it this way, and then we uh, put a few welds in there. It doesn't need to be welded continuously. We just have to hold it together, um, you know, permanently, obviously. But uh, and it has to survive the uh, the carburization process too. So we want pretty good welds on there, and it's all steel, so it should expand and contract at the same rate. So there's no um, nothing that yeah, theoretically nothing that wants to tear it apart. Um, so uh, what do you say we go weld this thing? Uh, I got to do a little prep here, uh, V this out a little bit, and then uh, I think we're ready for some welding. So I got a, the welding done. You can see this did a couple on the sides there. Ends here. It's still hot here. A little more on these sides. And then uh, on the bottom, all the way across on the bottom. Um, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, you know, when you weld, you want to make try to minimize distortion. So I'm still looking pretty good here. And on that end. Um, and we'll surface these, we'll just skim these until they clean up and, uh, and then this will go out for, uh, go out for heat treat. So uh, it's glowing right now so we'll just let it sit for a while then we'll do a little bit of cleanup machining on that. truing here. So I've got this in the vise at just a tiny little angle. Um, I got in it, it's not under there that tight. Um, I've shimmed it up. I measured the offset uh, from where these pads nominally sit on the uh, on the surface plate and I needed to tip this a little bit. So I don't want to take excessive uneven amounts off of those. So I want to get it as close to kind of square sitting with these just slightly tensioned uniformly. Oops. Pay attention here. Um, and then uh, I can take out the last little bit with the uh, with the flexures there. So, uh, um, but it's, you know, it's still got to go to heat treat and then we got to grind it. But I want it kind of nominally as close as I can get it um, to start with. So hopefully uh, we won't have to grind a a ton. I wouldn't want to grind this much off, is I guess what I'm saying. So let's see what we got now. Okay. 
Let's check our, uh, our square here. All right, looks pretty good. So this is this is kind of what we're making here, but a bigger version of that. So let's see what we got now. Oh, not bad. So you see that? I don't know if you see that. Stupid, stupid thing. So I don't know, seven tenths, something like that. Um, seven tenths leaning that way. Okay. That's pretty good. So we'll make the other side parallel with this, just machining. And um, this is probably, this is more than close enough for heat treat. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen when we heat treat it, uh, how much it's going to move around or break or whatever, but we'll find out. So let me do the other side. And I think I'll dust the top off too, get rid of that weld. And uh, Bob's your uncle. You can see the welds there. So the filler material is just slightly different than the base material. It's richer in alloy, um, so it ends up being a little bit harder than the uh, than the base material. So it's a little bit stronger, but it machines a little differently too. So you can see there.
<coughs> I don't know, it's about What is that? That's uh, that's right off the grinder, and I was plowing uh, about three thousandths of an inch. Uh, that was my depth of cut for uh, traversing across there. I just want to get a um, basic geometry before I send it out for heat treat. Then we can check it when it comes back and see how much this moves around during the uh, carburization process. Alright, this is a little bit of an interesting setup here. I want to dust these uh, these side rails off uh, while I got it uh, while I got it going here. Um, and they were a bit out of, if it just sits directly on those, the sides are out of square to it, actually a fair amount. Um, so I'm just, I've got one of my fresh ground sides up against the angle plate here and we're clamped up so we're going to dust this off then I can flip it over normal on the uh, chuck and dust the other side parallel to that but just do it now kind of get it uh, get it close and then we'll see how it uh, how it uh, comes out after heat treat Too worried about heat buildup in this situation. There's a pretty good mass there, and uh, this is just to kind of straighten out the world here. Hopefully, I can reach the other side. I think I checked it. Make sure that damn clamp doesn't hit. Alright, so this side's hitting harder. Definitely. Put a little cooling on that, just because it's a pretty big cut. 